This is a video review of our series on life. In this series, we've talked about what all living things do. First, we found that all living things respond to their environment. We showed this with an experiment. We took a flashlight and we shined it on a rock. And it did nothing because it's a non-living thing and it cannot respond to its environment. Then we took a flashlight and we shined it on a pill bug. And since it is alive, it can respond, and it did. It responded by crawling away, because it prefers darkness. All living things respond to their environment. An organism is a living thing, and the environment is surrounding objects and events. Next, we saw that all living things grow and develop. We watched a young acorn grow into a fully developed adult oak tree. All living things grow and develop. Next we saw that all living things reproduce, or produce offspring. We watched how an acorn can grow into a fully grown oak tree, and then how that oak tree can then produce many acorns. And then how all those acorns can then become trees if the conditions are right. To reproduce is to produce a copy, and all living things reproduce. Next we saw that all organisms have a complex chemistry. We talked about atoms and molecules. Atoms are some of the smallest pieces of matter, and molecules are atoms stuck together. Finally, we saw that living things have atoms and molecules that are arranged in a very complex or complicated way. Chemistry is the science of atoms and molecules, or the atomic and molecular makeup of an object. All living things have a complex chemistry. Next we saw that all living things maintain homeostasis. We imagined going out to get pizza with some friends. Whenever you eat something, your blood sugar level rises and a part of the body called the pancreas creates something called insulin, which then causes the body to lower its blood sugar level. In this way, the body is capable of maintaining a normal blood sugar level. It can maintain homeostasis, and this is something that all living things do. Homeostasis is the control over internal conditions. Next, we saw that all living things are made of cells. Cells come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are small and some are large and some are this shape and some are that shape and some cells live together in large colonies. Many cells are found in multicellular organisms. We are multicellular organisms. We are made of more than one cell. The cell is the smallest unit of life. You can think of it as a building block and all living things are made of cells. Next, we saw that all living things pass traits onto offspring. If a father and mother organism reproduce, they make offspring that might look a lot like dad, or a lot like mom, or a blend between the two. They also might make one that doesn't look quite like either of them. They might make a mutant. Heredity is the sharing of traits between parent and offspring. And all living things do this. They all pass their traits onto their offspring. Finally, we saw that all living things change and evolve. We imagined a group of organisms that are all different from each other in some way. Because they are different, they can survive and reproduce different. Take this organism on the far right. It has a special characteristic that allows it to survive for some reason. All these other organisms are wiped out. And the organism on the far right is left behind so that it can survive and reproduce. This refers to something called natural selection and it's one piece of the whole evolutionary picture. To evolve is to change over time, 
and all living things change and evolve. Well, that's all that I have to talk about for this video review. This is SJ Owen Science, and thanks for taking the time to view my videos.